Very often we hear the question, what can Worldwide Telescope do for me? This question comes from a variety of people, from professional researchers to professional educators to planetarium staff. We can show people the many different modes of Worldwide Telescope, illustrating a three-dimensional view of the universe, views of the sky with built-in data layers shown, as well as individuals, data overlaid, catalogs, images. We can show immersive panoramas. We can show the surface of the Earth, the surface of Mars, et cetera, et cetera. But really, people want a more personalized answer to how Worldwide Telescope is useful for different audiences. The interface is generic in that the sky is used as the substrate for all kinds of information linking imagery to underlying information available on the web, such as data, articles, and even Wikipedia entries. The interface is easy to understand for many different audiences, and we highly recommend that you go to the Worldwide Telescope website to learn more. Here, we show that Worldwide Telescope is useful as a tool on the web as well as a tool in Windows. Many different browsers can show you the sky and all kinds of underlying links from the sky without any additional software being installed. One of the most powerful features of Worldwide Telescope is the ability to use it to make interactive tours that offer explanations of anything from research projects to histories of certain people's research careers. This one is showing an interactive view of how you would build a tour about John Huckrow's contributions to astronomy. When that tour is done, you can either export it to video and put it somewhere available to the public, such as YouTube, or you can keep it as a guided interactive path through the program that can be used by anyone. Another feature that's very popular with professional astronomers and that audience is the ability to use the API of Worldwide Telescope to code up anything you want to show in terms of specialized data sets. This particular illustration is showing a recent release by the group at IPAC of the Planck data uh, visualized inside of Worldwide Telescope. One of the most powerful features of Worldwide Telescope is its direct links to online archives of literature and data. So here you can see that you can open ADS, Simbad, or Wikipedia to entries that are relevant to the piece of the sky you're looking at using this tool that you see at the upper left called the Finder Scope that you access by right-clicking from either the web or the Windows version of Worldwide Telescope. One project that relies on these links between literature and data is the ADS All Sky Survey that offers heat maps of the sky showing where the sky has been studied, how often, and for what reason. In this particular illustration, you see a view of the Orion region with a funky looking overlay of blue and red heat map where blue is just all articles and red is articles with authors at Harvard, but you can filter in other ways as well. And you see the slider moving back and forth showing you an underlying optical view of the sky showing that the Orion Nebula is a pop popular destination for articles. And here you can turn on show sources and show the individual articles that led to the heat map that you see. And you can link, see all the ADS entries or all the Simbad entries for any articles that you identify in the ADS All Sky Survey. You can also do more using the imagery that's embedded in the literature or even on the web. And so an extension to the ADS All Sky Survey coming soon uses the functionality that you can see here where you take any image on the web, which could be an ADS or somewhere else, and you pass it through a program called astrometry.net. Here we're demonstrating use of astrometry.net running in the background in Flickr. And in the Flickr group astrometry, if you upload an image, it will eventually be solved by astrometry.net. And in the comments will be a link that says view in Worldwide Telescope. If you click that link, you see the image on the sky in context where it goes. And using Worldwide Telescope, you can adjust what you see to give you context using any other wavelength or imagery that's been loaded in. And of course, you can also get to all of the ADS and CDS-like links that I mentioned before. A really powerful 
use of Worldwide Telescope is embedding information directly in publications now. So rather than just going back and pulling images that are already in publications, you can use it to make live links. And in this demonstration here, this is a paper of the future that gives examples of many different technologies that will be incorporated in journals in the future. But here's one where if you just take this image that's in the paper, you can include a live link that uses the kind of functionality we saw a minute ago through astrometry.met, but directly through the journal to embed the image right here on the sky. And again, use all of that functionality where you can see it in context, and you can even bring up the finder scope to actually link to other information that's relevant to this part of the sky. This functionality will be extended even more when the ADS All Sky Survey is linked very soon to the Astronomy Image Explorer that was created in a partnership by the Institute of Physics and the American Astronomical Society, where you can extract images filtered by a particular search query from all of the holdings of the journals. And so you see here that if you type in Ophiuchus, you get lots of images of Ophiuchus mixed in with graphs about Ophiuchus. But any of those images can be superimposed on the sky, as I just showed. Worldwide Telescope is a very powerful tool for education. And there's a program called Worldwide Telescope Ambassadors, which employs volunteer PhD level scientists who are anything from retirees to graduate students, postdocs, active faculty who go into classrooms and other uh, venues where there are kids to explain not the software, the kids figure that out just fine, but explain the astrophysics that goes along with what you can learn in the software. And uh, visit www.ambassadors.org to learn more about the range of projects there. The software is also useful at the college level. It's been used in Astronomy 101 style classes. The example here is from a project at Bucknell that deals with parallax and scales in the universe where labs have been created in Worldwide Telescope that accompany physical labs in the real world. At the graduate level, Worldwide Telescope has been used by graduate students to create modules where they explore a particular topic and explain it to other beginning graduate students or undergraduates. These are available on the web. And graduate students have also created an interactive kiosk that's on display at Harvard that engages the public and other students in the topics of tours shown on the kiosk. Worldwide Telescope is not surprisingly very popular at science fairs. And um, the USA Science and Engineering Festival and many other large fairs have been visited by the WWT ambassadors again. And here you can see one of our graduate student ambassadors explaining the universe to a very engaged child. Worldwide Telescope has a mode where it can run on a planetarium dome, which not many people know about. But not only does it show the universe in the correct projection for any planetarium, it can actually run on a back-end cluster to speed it up and um, suit the planetariums that have many projectors projecting at once on the dome, so much so that the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, which is a major large planetarium, created an entire show using Worldwide Telescope called Cosmic Wonder. And one of the best things about this is that the public is then told that they can go home and use Worldwide Telescope, the same tool as the Planetarium Show, to continue exploring the universe, which very much they enjoy. In the future, new interfaces will offer new options to explore, in particular, three-dimensional data sets inside of Worldwide Telescope. And shown here are just a couple of illustrations of those technologies, the HoloLens and the Connect. The Connect already works with Worldwide Telescope, and gestures can control your path through the universe. Perhaps the most important development coming in 2015 is that Worldwide Telescope will made, be made completely open source on GitHub, and people can extend the software's functionality, including connecting it to other software. Here you see the Glue Linked View data visualization software popping up a web window for Worldwide Telescope right inside of the desktop application where the data are linked across the two programs. There's much more to know about Worldwide Telescope. And in addition to the WorldwideTelescope.org site, you can check out WWTStories.org, which has more case studies than what I've shown you here. And you can 
see this excellent WWT user impact video. And we'll just close with a little bit of the beginning of that video.